where we left off was working on how to find percent composition of, say, water, knowing what percentage of that compound contains oxygen, what percentage of it is maybe hydrogen. So we were looking at individual elements within a compound. Today we're going to build on that same idea, but we're going to continue by looking at percentage of water in something that's called a hydrate. So what we would have done had we been back to normal face-to-face -face class is I would have given you a hydrate material. And so a hydrate is something that is ionic. And if you remember that from our unit on bonding, it means it's made out of a positive and a negative. So we have what we call a salt. So we aren't necessarily talking about table salt, even though that's categorized as a salt, but anything that is an ionic bond is classified as a salt. And so some of them, depending on their geometrical shape, when they form these bonds, allows water to fit within that structure. And so a lot of times what we see for a formula is like calcium chloride here. This part we worked on writing the formula. How we recognize that something's a hydrate is this part here. So it tells us for every one mole of calcium that that um, calcium chloride, I should say, that there is two moles of water because of that coefficient of two in front of that H2O. So what I could have done is given you a material where you would have heated it up on a Bunsen burner apparatus and you would have dehydrated it. So the water would have evaporated. Ionic compounds have very, very high melting points. So, um, so much so that you would not be able to melt that. The only thing that would happen in that change is you would dehydrate it and the water would be driven off. And so what you form is an anhydrate. So that prefix an means without, so a without water system. And so if you look at the formula, you see the water is removed. We don't talk about the two moles of water. And so our application of how you can use percent water is you can work on figuring out what that material is based on its composition. So I have two examples that we're gonna work through today that we will figure out what percentage of the water is found within that compound. The one thing these problems have in common with what we did last week is you start out by finding molar mass. So our salt that we're talking about, our hydrate salt, is called magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. And many of you probably have this in your home. This is what espum salt is. So if you go and take a look at the label of a bag of espum salt, you'll see that it contains magnesium sulfate. So the part that we really worry about is the formula here. And we can see it's a hydrate because of the water. So we're going to break this into two parts. So the first thing you want to do is find the molar mass of the magnesium sulfate. Just like we've done, we have magnesium. We have sulfur. And we have oxygen. There's one magnesium, one sulfur, and four oxygen. Again, we can look up their individual masses from our periodic table. Magnesium is 24.31, sulfur 32.07, and oxygen is 16. So the grand total molar mass of just the magnesium sulfate component of the salt here is 120.38 grams per mole. Now the next part we need to talk about is water. So I'm going to switch my font color, or my pen color, I should say, to help distinguish the two. So water is hydrogen and oxygen. We have two and one. Hydrogen, we use the one, and oxygen is the 16. So molar mass is going to be 18 grams per one mole. What you have to look at is very carefully is how many moles of that material you have. So that coefficient decides how many. So that's the molar mass if you have one mole. We have seven because that coefficient is in front of the seven on the water. So you then multiply water's molar mass times seven, and that gives you a total of 126 grams per mole. Now last step. We need to get the molar mass of the whole entire component, the whole compound. That compound, that hydrate, contains the magnesium sulfate along with this water. So we're going to add that together. So if you take 
the 120.38, that's the molar mass of the magnesium sulfate, add that to the molar mass of those seven uh, water molecules, that gives us a grand total of 246.38. So the molar mass of the entire hydrate is going to be that 246.38, again accounting for the fact that we have seven water molecules. So just like our formula for percent composition, we're doing the same thing, percent composition essentially, but it's percent composition of water. So the difference is we're now solving for a whole compound versus last week we were solving for just an individual element. So what we're going to do first is you're going to take your mass of water over the entire molar mass. This piece, and I'm going to mark that in purple, is that 126. Again, that's the mass of only the water. So the 126 grams per mole will be the numerator or top portion of your problem. Now the bottom to find percent water is the molar mass of the entire compound. So that's the magnesium sulfate and water. That's why we had to add the two together. That's this 246 down here. Now the last thing to make something a percentage is multiplying over 100. So again, last week we took the mass of the water over the mass of the compound. Now we're taking the mass of the water over the mass of the whole hydrate. So again, we're going to see these cancel out. You're going to multiply by 100. Again, percent is a unit. It's not something that you are putting into uh, your calculator to solve. So this compound, if you work it out, should be approximately 51.14% water. So I have a similar problem below working with another compound and it's going to kind of again follow the same suit in terms of how to solve. So the first thing, just like the previous problem, is we have some molar mass conversions or calculations I really should say. So we're working with this iron 3 chloride, so we have FeCl3. So we want to find the molar mass of it. It contains one iron and three chlorine. Then you would use your periodic table to identify each of their masses. So iron is 55.93 and chlorine is 35.45. So when you multiply and add up to get a total, the total molar mass is 162.28. Okay, so that's the mass of the salt part of the hydrate. The next part's going to look really familiar. We need to know the molar mass of water. Well, that didn't change from the last problem to this problem. Water is water. It still has that same composition of two hydrogens and one oxygen. So it's still 18. Now, the part that's different from the last problem is how many moles of water are locked up within that hydrate. You can see here I just boxed in that six. So the coefficient, that number that is found in the front, tells you how many moles there are. So it changed in the previous problem from seven moles of water to this problem, and this particular salt is only six moles. So what we're going to do differently from the last problem to this problem is we're going to multiply by six because there's six moles of water. So 18 times 6 is 108. So the total molar mass of the water is 108 grams per mole. So again, what we need to do here is we're going to add up the molar mass of the salt and the molar mass of the water. So when I add the 108 from the 6 moles of water to the molar mass of the iron 3 chloride, we get 270.28. Okay, so in these problems, you kind of have three steps to start with molar mass. Molar mass of your salt, molar mass of water, and then get a grand total by adding them together. Now you have all your information. We can start determining what percentage of this compound is water. So again, the numerator, the top part, 
is always your smallest amount. It's how much you have the part out of the whole. So we're trying to figure out what part of this compound is water. So the mass of water is that 108 gram per mole. Over the total, that's the molar mass of everything combined. So that's the 270.28. And again, to make anything a percentage, it's times 100. Those units cancel once you divide them. So again, we're looking at a unit that will be percentage. And so our percent water in this compound will be less. It's going to be 39.96% water. So these are the two examples that will work through how to find percent water. You have two practice problems to complete today with calcium chloride and copper 2 sulfate and figuring out what percentage of water. So again, if you follow kind of the examples I've set up here, you'll be set up. If you have any questions, please reach out to me.